I am going to create a tutorial on how to use Autodesk Sketchbook, which is a free software produced by Autodesk, free right now at least, how to use that in Blackboard Collaborate as a whiteboard uh, instead of using built-in whiteboard utility in Collaborate, which is really not very good. We did some polling of students after our switch from face-to-face -face classes to online classes during the um, 2020 spring, 2020 COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, some of the feedback that I saw coming from some students whose teachers used the whiteboard to collaborate just indicated that they felt it was very limiting. And um, I, I also found this to be the case when I was trying to prepare. So I used Sketchbook and um, I'm going to go ahead and, and screen share so that I can show you how, how I do that. Okay, I want to show how from Collaborate I can share my sketchbook. So on the right we have a sketchbook window, on the left is Collaborate, and if I open up the panel in Collaborate there is this third option here is share content. So when I pick share content, this is where I would find the blank whiteboard, which um, as I've discussed, you can use, but it's, um, it's not that good. So I can draw and it does have a nice smoothing feature, but if I want to erase something, it, I just have to clear the whole page. So it, it's not ideal, okay? It's not ideal and it's very limited. So instead of sharing the blank whiteboard, I want to go to share application screen. And uh, I can share my entire screen with the students, but they don't really need to see my view of Collaborate. So I want to pick application window. And here is the, the sketchbook application. So I select it and I share. And then what the students are going to see is they're going to see my sketchbook window. So as I draw, then something is going to appear for them. Now, it may be the case that when we open up Sketchbook, I don't see any toolbars to help me. So I, I want to go to Window. I want to open up the toolbar. And if I don't see it, this allows me to undo or redo. And it has many other tools, which I will be talking about shortly. So I'm, I'm going to go over all of these tools, but I do not want the basic document that, um, that opens up. I don't want this document type, which is a single page document. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get rid of my Collaborate window so that I can focus solely on Sketchbook and how to use Sketchbook. But you can see that whatever I do in Sketchbook is going to be mirrored over here and collaborate for all of the students to see. So let's let's go to just Sketchbook itself. What I would like to do is open up a new flipbook. The new flipbook, the size that I like is 1280 by 1080 for the purposes of collaborate. It's a pretty good size. It gives you an option for number of frames. It starts with 240, but uh, I've already switched it to 24, which should be plenty for a normal lecture. Now, once I have created the flipbook, I have a series down here of pages, and only the first page has anything. So I can draw on that first page. And if I make a new page, the new page is blank. So maybe this is the first page of my notes and then I do something, I want to do some new work, so I go to a second page, and this little bar down here, if you don't see that bar, this is called the animation timeline. So ordinarily, it may not be present, but we want to turn on the animation timeline. So I don't particularly need these little squiggles, so I can just use undo, and this bar at the top this toolbar gives me essentially access to all of the tools that I will want. Now on the bottom left there is something called the Lagoon and it gives a, a few quick tools. It's got a 
undo and a redo and it's got this little menu that I use the zoom a lot because I can move this around if you drag around you're gonna move the page but if I grab the middle then and go up and down I can zoom to try to get things looking the right size over on the right this sheet will give me an option of, of writing on the background if I write on the background it will be on every single slide so I don't typically do that I can write on the mid ground which is normally where I like to operate and then the foreground allows you to draw over the top of the mid ground you could also if you prefer draw on the foreground and then you could draw underneath that layer using the mid ground so we have essentially two workable layers here in the, the flip book. If you have a single document, you can have as many layers as you want. It's very similar to Photoshop. For teaching, I really want, I don't need so many layers, but I want lots of pages. Okay, so we have here my first page, and I will demonstrate some of the tools. If, if I don't see my palette, then on my main toolbar, I can toggle that on and off. And so we have the pencil tool, and this is just, you know, it looks like a pencil. If I want it to be thicker, there's, in this area, right above the pencil, I, if I click that, I open up the properties, and I can, you know, I can make it thicker if I really want something that looks like a, a not very sharp soft pencil. And we can also play with the opacity, but I generally don't. And I, I generally just keep the pencil pretty thin for writing. And then if I want a thicker line, I switch to the pen tool. So the pen tool gives me nice bold lines, maybe for vectors or for drawing a diagram. Maybe I you know, want to have a cliff and I want um, Lionel Messi. It's going to kick a soccer ball off of the cliff. And if I want to change colors, I have a color editor, which again, we can toggle this on and off from our main toolbar at the top, but maybe I want that uh, path to be a blue. And so it goes like that, or maybe I don't want blue. Maybe I want it to be red because the blue is, blue is gonna be the water down here. And uh, whatever, you can, you can use the colors, you can use them to be cute, but you can also use them to differentiate parts of your diagram in the same way you, you would with maybe dry erase markers. Once I've done this, maybe I want to take this sketch that's on a slide and I want to move it to the next slide. So I can take my rectangular selection, I can take the whole thing, and copy it and then we move on to the next slide and paste it and once I've pasted it it automatically selects the movement tool so that I can place it where I want it okay so this is really handy if you're doing a calculation and you want to continue on the next page you can take the last line of your calculation or the diagram that, that accompanies the calculation and transfer that to the next slide so if I go back, here's my previous slide, and that's, you know, maybe I had some work on this slide, and now here is the diagram so that I can continue working. Other tools that you might find convenient, you may want to make straight lines, so, or squares, or circles, or, you know, so if I really want straight lines, if I want my vector to look very perfect, I can use the straight line tool. And, you know, sometimes I do that. Sometimes it just depends on uh, how important it is for me for, for that vector to look like a nice straight line. We can also make circular shapes. And so I use this a lot in semester two of physics when I, you know, maybe have a circular region full of magnetic field or a circular loop of wire and I want it to look nice. So obviously, you know, you can use shapes. You know how to do that. We can also put a ruler on the page. So maybe I, I really want to line something up starting 
let's see, maybe I want it to connect with, uh, with this vector and I want it to be tangent to this circle. Okay, so now when I draw, the, um, the ruler kind of fixes that. So that can be a useful tool as well. We additionally have, if I want to draw a round shape, I can something more complex. You can use the French curve. We can um, flip the French curve over. We can shrink or can change the size of the French curve. We can turn it. And so these are just, I'm just showing you some features you can use. You can put a text layer if you want. I don't tend to do that. But you could, if you're using this to produce a nice set of um, notes, you might use that to put some labels. There is a fill tool. I find the fill tool is very finicky. Um, if the lines, if there's any break, then it will not fill uh, or won't stop. And even sometimes if your lines are not the most opaque, this time it's working. But sometimes I will think I have a solid shape, but my lines are a little bit translucent, transparent. And then the fill tool gets confused and it fills the whole page. Now there, there is actually, um, there's a threshold so you can change how sensitive it is to the fullness of the line. But um, this is something that I think just with a little practice you'll get better at. Here we have a smoothing. This may be something that some of you want. If you want to draw and you don't want your lines to be, it probably makes more sense with the pencil. If I if I have the smoothing turned off when I draw with the pencil, let me make that darker for you. It's, you know, it can be, I don't know, it, 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 smoothing, smoothing can help. Okay, smoothing can help if I don't want to have so many variations. Gives you nice smooth lines. You can turn up and down the sensitivity. I. I don't tend to use it. If I really need a nice line, I, I probably use the straight line feature. Um, so colors. Let me talk about colors a little bit. This wheel is very handy just to select the color that you want. Now, uh, a really nice thing we can do is if I want to draw, if I'm going to be using a lot of red, so maybe I have a new, new page and I'm going to be using red to uh, do something. So maybe I have, uh, I want to write in black, net force equals MA, and maybe I have tension minus um, the force of gravity for mass one equals M1 times A1, and maybe I have another equation here, M2G minus T equals M2 times A2. And then what I want is I want to point out that, hey, these tensions are the same. If I add these two equations, well, I, maybe I, I want to just take this thing and I want to move it over here. And when I do that, add the equations, I want to show that, hey, these guys are going to cancel out with red. So this color wheel is very nice for me to just go from red down to the darkest version of red, which is black, or I could get to white if I had a colored background. We can also desaturate the, the red, so this gives a lot of uh, room, but what I primarily use it for is I go back and forth from a bold color to black, and then if I want a different bold color, I switch it like this, and now I'm going between black and blue. So I have blue, I have black. Those are the main features. Now if I want to erase, I have a hard eraser and a soft eraser. So the hard eraser is going to be solid and the soft eraser, <laughs> it slowly erases. It depends a little bit on the pressure that I exert. I tend to 
probably find more use for the heart eraser. Once you have done your lecture and you have these multiple pages, which you can, you can flip through them if you have questions later, you can go back and look at previous slides. You can duplicate a slide in the middle and work on it. Maybe someone had a question about this uh, slide, um, you know, and so I can just duplicate it. And uh, on this version, maybe I'm going to use my airbrush to kind of talk about, so I, I use it as a gesture. Sometimes I say, well, we've got this region here, and what we're really focused on is, you know, the difference between the initial and the final. So you can use the, the airbrush tool to highlight things, but I'm doing it on a duplicate copy, so I haven't really messed up my original slide. I don't really want all this stuff probably on my original slide. So these guys were on the foreground. Uh, that's maybe something else I can show you that's nice. So I'm on the, the mid-ground now, and if I switch to the foreground, and maybe I want to draw velocity vectors at different points along this trajectory, and maybe I screw one of them up, and so I want to erase it when I erase it, because I'm on the foreground now, my picture in the midground now does not get erased. So that's a really nice thing uh, to use. I use this actually to grade work that students send me. I put their work on the midground and then I write on the foreground. And that way I can erase my own comment if it's not, um, you know, if it's not legible or something like that. I, I have bad strokes, then I can erase it without erasing their underlying picture. Um, so this is this can be very convenient for that purpose as well. Okay, that was a short introduction to using Sketchbook. Um, I think that should give you enough to get started. I would highly recommend using it in Collaborate instead of the whiteboard that's built in. I think it's got a lot more functionality. I think it's fairly easy to use. It is free. Um, you, you do, I think, really need to have a stylus um, to use it. I mean, you can use a mouse or a mouse pad, but you're not going to get, you're not going to get very good you know, drawings. Um, but that goes also for the whiteboard on Blackboard. Um, so, um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. I'm not an expert, but if, um, if I know the answer, I'm happy to help. Thanks.